Greetings. This is September 28th. We are looking southward along the eastern wall of the Painted Chasm. And this geological structure was carved out during the last ice age when a great glacial lake broke through and carved out the lava flows from the Chilcotin. And if you look down to the bottom of the chasm, you're looking into the primeval era from hundreds of millions of years ago. And this is a fascinating structure. And I like to use it as a reminder that the earth carries on. And we are now looking at notification from BC Wildfire that uh, the Elephant Hill, that's K20637, is 100% contained. This extended from Thursday, July 6th through to Wednesday, September 27th. The notification came out at 11.29 a.m. And uh, there was a revised size on the total hectares, 191,865. Uh, slightly smaller due to more detailed perimeter mapping. And uh, they are expressing there is still a tree danger. Uh, falling trees, uh, as if a wind goes through and you're out in the bush, it could be a hazard. So you want to watch yourself and uh, you don't want to come through all this and then accidentally get knocked in the head or something. Um, they will be conducting mop-up. So you may see uh, patrols going through and monitoring uh, different fire flare-ups, uh, just as some areas may dry out and then peak up again. However, our wildfire crews and all the support people, the RCMP, the uh, air support, they have concluded that this is 100% contained and it's certainly an opportunity for celebration and to congratulate them on this success and milestone. We also have to consider and honor all the people that uh, have helped and uh, the First Nations that have battled this fire, the uh, different farmers and uh, people outside the perimeter that have come in together to conquer this incredible adversity. And we just shake the hand of the neighbor on the street and thank them for their effort in this because uh, there's a lot of unsung heroes out there that really did struggle to keep this fire back and down. I'd like to turn now to the NRC data. This is their interactive infrared mapping system and it has also supported us throughout this wildfire. Uh, we were able to view uh, infrared on its approach and make calculations based on uh, what we were seeing with wind and the fire behavior. So let's take a look at the infrared animation from July 6th through to September 27th and you'll be able to see the progression and there will be periods where you can't see a perimeter and you can't see hot spots. That's because uh, data was not available for that day and also at the end after September 13th everything calms down so there'll be an extended uh, ending to this as the days wind away and the full containment is achieved. So here we go from July 6, 2017.
And now we've arrived at September 27th. If you notice during the playback, the dates August 12th through to August 19th, the infrared was very hard to perceive. Uh, there's limited visibility. A lot of the perimeter was obscured until it was revealed on the 19th. Now let's take a look at the BC wildfire perimeter mapping and we will play this forward from the date that they began posting fire perimeters on July 10th all the way through to September 10th where their most recent perimeter map is available and the link to all these will be below. There is one PDF image file that didn't open for me and that was from the August 14th and we'll just skip over that one and I'll call out the dates for you as we go through. So first off we are looking at July 10th and the fire size at this time was already 10,304 hectares. Now we're looking at July 15th, July 20th, July 24th, July 26th, July 27th, July 28th, July 31st, August 2nd, August 3rd, August 4th, August 7th, August 11th, August 12th, August 13th, August 17th, August 18th, August 19th, August 25th, August 31st, September 2nd, September 4th, September 7th, September 10th and finally we have another one from September 4th. This was the northernmost extension south of Sheridan Lake. And there you have it as reported in the 100 Mile Free Press Elephant Hill wildfire under control after 83 days burning. And to give you a size comparison on how large this fire was, let's uh, do an overlay and compare the perimeter of the Elephant Hill wildfire to various cities around the world and in Canada. So to start, let's go on Google Earth and we're looking at Vancouver and the Lower Mainland. Now with the Elephant Hill wildfire perimeter overlaid on top. Now we're looking at Seattle, Washington. And we are looking at Portland, Oregon. And here you can see some of the large fires that were raging on satellite infrared around Portland at the time. Now we're looking at Los Angeles and moving to Mexico City. Now we're looking at, at Alberta. This is Calgary and with the wildfire perimeter laid over top. And now Edmonton. It gives you an opportunity to see how vast this uh, wildfire was. This is Regina and now with the fire on top and we're moving to Winnipeg and you can see there were several fires occurring at that time. Now we're looking at London and just a vast wildfire territory when compared to places like here Paris and Berlin and now we're looking at New Delhi in comparison. You could fit several of those cities inside. Uh, Beijing and Hong Kong. Now we're moving to Sydney, Australia and this offers comparison for many of the wildfire fighters that uh, came to help from Australia. Now we're moving back to Canada. This is Moncton, New Brunswick with the Elephant Hill parameter superimposed and now Prince Edward Island just to give you a scope of the size. Now Sydney, Nova Scotia. Now we're moving northwards to St. John's, Newfoundland. And here you can see the Elephant Hill wildfire was larger than Conception Bay. Now we're moving to Toronto, Ontario. 
and we'll superimpose the fire perimeter. The perimeter would run all the way from Hamilton to Newmarket. Now we're looking at Montreal and the St. Lawrence. And now we've moved back to Victoria and this running from Souk well past Nanaimo as wide as the Strait of Juan de Fuca in places. And now we've arrived back at the Thompson Nicola Regional District and the Caribou. And I hope this gives you a perspective on how large this fire was. You could fit several major cities inside this fire perimeter. And that may give you an indication of how difficult it was to battle, especially with the uh, diverse weather conditions, uh, the varied geography. Just an incredible feat to uh, contain this. So I hope this gives you some perspective on the size and scope and how the fire behavior occurred. There was uh, uh, weather patterns that uh, accelerated the growth. It would slumber and then leap ahead forward again. So this I put together as a resource that we can refer to. And I'd also ask if you would like to leave comments on your recommendations. Um, also, any uh, volunteer groups for helping people rebuild uh, for wildlife rescue and uh, providing feed for wildlife uh, over the coming winter. So I'll do one more video that includes any comments that you wish to include and uh, we'll direct that to the powers that be. Uh, one thing I noticed, the grapes in the Okanagan have a very smoky taste this year, so you might notice that in future wine production. It's an overwhelming uh, situation that, that has taken over the entire province over the summer. We made it through. Now let's continue to check on our neighbors, make sure that uh, they're able to recover, help them rebuild, and move forward. We'll be back, and I look forward to reading any comments uh, and your suggestions on what you feel might have, should have happened, uh, what could happen and work better, and we'll put those together in a bit of a report from Brent's desk. So thank you very much for watching.